Hey everyone. Um, I want to share a very personal story um, experience that I had with God. Um, and it's not going to be an easy one to share, so uh, please bear with me. It's been on my heart all day. I never, never thought I would share this actually. Um, but I've had some comments of some people that suffer from like health problems and pain. And I, I really think this is beneficial to them too. So without giving like my testimony at this, this point, you guys are going to get a kind of a rundown of some ugly. Um, I came from a very, very broken, um, violent home. So needless to say, you know, my family is still broken, <laughs> you know, um, there's lots of conflict and trouble and there's lots of ugly in it. But with that being said, let's go back to 2018. You know, um, for years I had been one of those people that, you know, went to the gym in the morning before work, um, exercised. My love for dogs kept me outside hiking, you know, after work. Um, very active. Um, fun for me would be floating down the river. So that was my life in a nutshell. And then one day, all of a sudden, after work, walking dogs, I couldn't walk as far as I normally did. Couldn't figure out what was going on. I couldn't figure out what was going on when I go to the gym in the morning and there would just be all this kind of pain that like plaguing me. Eventually, not long when this started, I would say within a couple months, I would find myself not being able to walk, like period. You know, like if I could walk three steps, I would stop it, it, and I couldn't walk any further. And I'd have to gain strength to walk a few more steps. It got so bad I couldn't even get dressed. It, it, it was crazy. Whatever was going on with my body at that time, we couldn't figure it out, you know. Going to the doctors, they're putting me on all kinds of prednisone and saying, you know, that, well, I think this is it, this is it, and everything like that. So my health is crap, all right? Anyways, all of a sudden, I get a, I, I'm in the South, too, at this point. I'm in the South. I get a phone call from family that I never hear from that's up North. And uh, one of the newest members of the family, a six month old baby was in the hospital, almost died, had four broken ribs, um, right hemisphere of the brain uh, was bleeding, the left back hemisphere of the brain was bleeding, lacerated liver. I remember talking to the doctor and he was an older man, said in his whole life of practice, he couldn't believe she was still alive. Anyways, they call me, call me and say, we need your help, you know? Um, this and this and this is going on. So needless to say, uh, parents are in trouble. Um, father is in prison. Mother had, you know, loses all rights to the baby. And there's literally no one in my family that's up north or on my, my side of the family or the father's side of the family that qualifies to get the baby. The only other person would be um, one of my family members that's even further south than me that actually has obligations that sh she could not leave um, to get the baby and to move the baby to the south would be like six months, you know, just because of paperwork. I'm sorry if this is confusing. Um, it, it's a big ordeal when something like this happens. Anyways, and I had not met this baby yet. So God willing, you know, um, God somehow managed to give me strength. I have no idea where it came from. It only could be God to drive up north and go to the hospital, see a little baby, a little six month old baby that looks like a newborn to me. And, uh, and find out, you know, the extent of 
all of these injuries, what has had happened. You know, there was one rib that was already broken that was in the healing process. So this was something that was going on. So anyways, talking to children's services and everything, um, the only option was she would go into foster care or for me to move up here to get her. So my two youngest children um, are 15 months apart. One had graduated the year before and one just graduated um, and they had just moved out. So my oldest son was already up here in the north. And so anyways, you know, I have a boyfriend and everything down south and you know, together seven years, dogs, you know, my girl's still in that state. And uh, I, I have to leave. And, and at this point too, because I'm now on short-term disability because of my health, like I'm short of funds. I don't have a residency up north. So that was the other thing. So I, I needed to be financially stable and have a residency in order to get the baby. How am I going to do that, right? That's my thought. So I'm praying to God. I'm like, God, I, I don't look my health. You know, I had everything in my mind saying, there's no way I can do this. My health sucks. I don't have a residency. I don't have the means to do anything about this, right? That That's me thinking, you know. But God had a bigger plan for me in this baby to do the impossible, you know, absolutely impossible. I make a phone call and, um, you know, talking to someone very, very close to me. And I'm sorry, I'm leaving names out and specifics out, but that's just for privacy matter matters. But someone very close to me, I said, this is the situation said, if I can get the baby, can you take us in? And he said, yes. I'm like, okay. So now I drive back to the South and that was on a Saturday. On a Sunday, I packed and on a Monday, I was back up North. So that was all the goodbye that a boyfriend had, my children had, everything. That was it. That was it no idea. I mean, like the hoops you have to jump through to do this, you know? Lots and lots of obstacles and God moved mountains. I mean, like he paved a way that like there was no way, absolutely zero way for me to accomplish any of this on my own. I mean, it, it was that. Needless to say, the whole entire time this this thing's going on, I am in prayer because, you know, my logical side, my fleshliness, you know, is like, what am I supposed to do? You know, my health sucks. I can barely walk. I can barely get dressed. How am I going to take care of a baby? You know? Well, he found a way. And during this, he also started restoring my health. All of a sudden, I started walking better. And my health that kept me from working and on short-term disability and my kids graduating. I mean, the timing, all of this came together. Like, man can't do that. I mean, it really can't. So I'm getting stronger, but I'm also able to give this baby 24 seven care. And the baby has night terrors and you know, it's the only physical therapy she ever ha had was from me, like nonstop working with this baby. We had no idea what kind of future she was going to have, what kind of trauma. And by God alone, this baby is healthy today. I mean, she's a healthy toddler today. You know, I had her for a year and a half. Um, Mom recovered, changed her life around, is an excellent mom today. God's, own, God's my hand again. Um, but 
The reason why I share this story is because sometimes when we have physical ailments, you know, we're like, did we do something wrong? You know, is God punishing me? Does God want me to be sick? You know, I had all of those questions like, you know, what did I do? You know, uh, what's going on here? So uh, let, let, let's go continue on. Okay, so, so the baby is getting better. Mom's getting better. Everything's getting better. And I'm, I'm back to working, you know, and I, I drive a truck and I drive a, a Big Mac truck for asphalt and concrete. So um, I'm small in stature, like I'm five foot one. I don't weigh a whole lot. Um, I'm the one person that can stand up in her truck and go from seat to seat, you know. It, but being that small um, also plays a toll on your health too. So you got the big old steering wheel and your gear shift over here and you're driving backwards two miles and you're leaning over here to see out of a mirror, you know. So I, I did that for a couple seasons and, you know, and at this point, baby is back with her mom. I don't have her. And out of nowhere, like all this health stuff comes back again, like plagues me like no tomorrow, like, and it started with my lungs. And needless to say, COVID happens around this time. Kind of freaky, right? I don't know how I have the worst immune system in the world. I've never gotten COVID ever. And my son who lives with me, this had it three times. Go figure, you know? But anyway, that, but the walking, the muscles, you know, I go through biopsies and tests and everything to finally figure out what's going on. You know, now I am on a treatment. I have the IVIG therapy and stuff like that. So, you know, hopefully, you know, I will stop being trapped inside my own body because I haven't been able to work. Um, you can't work for someone when you don't know if you're going to wake up and be able to walk. You can wake up in the morning and think you feel great and, you know, like, oh my goodness, I don't hurt so bad. I can walk down the stairs and an hour later, you're stuck on the other floor because you can't climb the stairs. So th that is my life and it, it sucks. It sucks. And there's a lot of people out there that have you know, health conditions where you're just trapped inside your body. You don't know why. What is this? Does God want me to be sick until this time? I wish I knew the answer to that. I feel in so many ways that in, in different times of my life, that God has put me in positions that were so uncomfortable to make me move my feet from a situation he did not want me to be in. You know, I truly believe that. Um, if things wouldn't have happened the way they did, and, you know, I would have still been doing the job down in the South, and I wouldn't have been able to get away from it, you know, all of these things, would I have been able to get the baby? You know, like, there's a grander plan that we don't understand. That there is. And when God is moving in your life and you're 100% reliant on him, he paves way. He removes obstacles. Um, he, he does everything that you can't see a way to get there. Like, it is, I, I really have no words. It's miraculous, you know, God's hand. Um, what do you do when you're this sick? you know, when you're trapped inside your body, you know, it can be depressing. I mean, there's, there's times, you know, yeah, I wait on the rapture, you know, is it because of my health? Well, who won't, don't want to leave a sick body and get a new one? You know, I'll be honest there, but no, I, I want to be with Jesus. There is absolutely nothing on this earth that you could give me a new body all the money in the world, you know, the biggest house, you could not give me anything on this earth for me to choose that over Jesus. There's no way. Absolutely zero. There's nothing. Um, I want nothing of this earth. 
So that brings me, the other question is, how attached to Earth are you? How attached to plans and things that you want to do in the future, you know? Um, there's lots of Christians out there that don't believe in a rapture. They not, they're not discerning the times. They don't think these are the last days. And for the life of me, I can't wrap my head around that one at all. Um, to me, it's so obvious. And to me, why aren't they watching? You know, why wouldn't they want to leave here? I, I have all of these questions, just like, you know, the rest of you guys do. I'm sorry if I'm, I get sidetracked. That's the one thing when you live with like certain health problems, you can lose your thought process easily and that kind of sucks, so sorry. Um, but anyway, I only share this story because God can do the impossible. He really can. And when you think there's no way, he will provide a way if it's his will, you know? He will, I mean, timing on that situation, I mean, that's all God, all God. I had nothing, you know, nothing, not health, not money, not a home. And he provided all of that instantly, instantly. So I praise God and give him glory all day long for that, you know? And we have a very, very healthy, smart baby on top of that. Um, so yeah, my heart is extremely full. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll always be in awe of God's hand. But to move on, you know, with people, faith and works, you know, because this makes me think of that too. People think their works have something to do with salvation, faith and works. No, no. We will fall short every single day, you know. We can't see past our own you know, self to figure things out, you know, believing in Jesus alone and what he did for us on the cross is our salvation. And there is a peace that comes with that. These people that convince you that you got to do this, this, and this, and this to keep your salvation are the ones that are saying, you know, that's why you're in your house, you know, condemning every bad choice you ever made and doubting your salvation. No, that's not of God. That's not the Holy Spirit. When you believe in Jesus alone and you want to feel Jesus' presence, get yourself out of the way, you know, totally out of the way and be thankful for that free gift. You know? Because at that moment, when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, that change happens. You know, your, your heart changes, your mind changes, you know, this isn't of yourself. You know, this isn't because you're reading the the word and trying to learn all the right and wrong. No, Holy Spirit is working in you, 100%. And if you continue to let the Holy Spirit guide you, you know, which what, at that moment, I mean, seriously, that's what takes over. You can't stop it. You really can't. You're going to follow and there, there is something inside of you when there's something that you shouldn't be doing. Holy Spirit tells you, wait a minute. Mm -mm. All of a sudden, you know, something that used to come out of your mouth, you know, never thinking anything of it. When you say something nasty, you're like, oh, I feel horrible about that. That's the Holy Spirit. You know, it's not what goes in your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out. So that's one of the first things that you'll notice. You know, when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, is a change of what you say, what comes out. You know, things that, you know, maybe bad jokes, you know, you used to say things funny, now rub you the wrong way. Things that you used to enjoy and couldn't wait to do, all of a sudden don't look appealing. That's the Holy Spirit. That's not you. That is the Holy Spirit doing a work in you changing your heart, changing your mind, and leading you on a path of righteousness so that way you can walk with God. You know, th that's all that is. It's not your works. Do you produce good works? Absolutely, because the Holy Spirit is working in you. 
Um, it's not of yourself. This is all to the glory of God. Anyway, I'm hoping that this video speaks to someone and you can find comfort in knowing that you can put 100% of your faith in God alone and he will take care of you. Um, put all of your faith in what Jesus did on the cross, okay? Not of your works. Whenever you, you're you wondering why Jesus, like you don't feel his presence, like when, you're first, when you first believed, are you focusing on your works? Ask yourself that. If you're, you don't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, are you focusing on your works, thinking, well, I've done this, I've done that? Are, are you being a fruit inspector and inspecting someone else's works? Because if, you're, if you have that going on in your mind, step back. Step, step back for a minute and say, well, wait a minute. You know what? I may tithe faithfully. You know what? I do that because God has blessed me with the ability to do that. And he's put it in my heart, the desire to do that. That, again, glory to God, not of yourself, but to him. Okay? These are good works produced through the Holy Spirit because you believe. Um, not yourself. Anyway, I hope this message blesses you. I want to thank everyone who has subscribed. I never actually envisioned or thought about having a subscriber. Um, and this channel is definitely 100% God. Uh, yeah, 1000% God. Because one, I didn't want to do it. I, I try to find every single reason not to do it. And it took months and months and months and months and months to do, listen, you know. So all the all the people, all the views, Hunter, all of it <laughs> are it's God, God alone, and I give Him all the glory. And uh, thanks, and thanks to everyone that subscribed and um, share the gospel. Love somebody today, okay.